Take our Bibles and turn to Romans chapter number four, book of Romans chapter number four. If you're visiting with us and you don't have a Bible, uh, we would love to put one in your hands after the service if we're able to do that. Uh, there are also Bibles in the pews in front of you, underneath you, black King James Bibles, amen, that is the Bible we believe is the Word of God, and we'd love for you to look on with us to see exactly what it says, and so I know the Lord wants to speak to you. Here's the thing, He, he speaks through His Word, through the preaching of His Word, and uh, a lot of people, you know, uh, I, I, and, and I'm not going to argue the fact of anything, a lot of folks have, uh, have dreams and different things like that, and I say, well, you just really just ate too much pizza because God don't give us any extra. There's no extra revelation. He says they gave us 66 books and for him to give you something, a revelation to you would go against what his word says. Now I'm not putting anything against dreams. I've had dreams that I was, I've had dreams. I was in hell. I've had dreams as I was in heaven. Uh, do I think that those were God doing that to me? I don't believe God was trying to teach me anything about hell or teach me anything about heaven. I think my mind wandered and different things, and I think about those two places. Uh, uh, but anyways, uh, the Bible is what's going to speak to us today, and I tell you, the Lord wants to speak to you. Uh, he, he does, and he'll do that through the preaching of the word. And so Romans chapter number four is where we're going to begin reading. We've been preaching through the book of Romans and i uh, excited to preach this message to you today. Verse number one, the Bible says, What shall we say then that Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly. I like that part. He justifies the ungodly. His faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also described the blessedness of man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Uh, I'm going to preach today, and, 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 and I'm going to explain to you these verses. That's what Bible preaching is for. It's what the Word of God is for. Maybe it stumped you a few things there I've said or read so far. That's okay. You'll leave here with a perfect working knowledge of what that means. And we want to help you. We want the Spirit of God to help you with it, too. Uh, there are many religions, and what we have here at Liberty Baptist Church, we're not a religious denomination. You see, well, it says Baptist out there. That means we believe Baptist doctrine, uh, which really means that we believe the Bible in its full context. We believe the Word of God, but we're not a denomination. Uh, we are just Bible believers, a uh, local New Testament church. And, uh, and, and, and so a lot of people uh, will be, that are religious have these different denominations, and I'm not going to start naming them to you, but some of them, and a lot of them, preach that you have to do something to get him. That you have to work, or that you'll have to do good, or you'll have to uh, make the right decision all the time, or, or you'll have to be without sin, or you'll have to uh, uh, give something or do something to get the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is absolutely 100% false. God has done the work. And we tell folks, and we read a good book years ago by Kerry Schmidt, uh, we, a lot of people say, do this, do that, do that. But we say, God's done this, God done that, and God's done this. Uh, and, and it's a done religion. He said, well, do you work, Brother Burton? I do. But I only work because of what God has already done in my life. Faith without works is dead, James said. So if you say you have faith, but you don't care about doing anything for God, then you have a dead faith if you even have a faith. And, and so I want to talk to you about that today. And, and logic tells us that it's faith and that it's not works. Logic. 
from the Bible. We're going to look at that today, and I want to preach that to you today. Let's pray. We'll have a song, and I'm preaching to you just for a few minutes. Father, we love you, and Lord, we thank you for the Word of God today. And I pray that you would bless the preaching and teaching of your word. Help my mind to not wander. Help us to stay focused, Lord. But help me most of all to say what you'd want to be said. And may you get in the message. May you be the message. May you just use me as a messenger. And may you speak through us today, Lord, and help each one of us to grasp and to understand the word of God and help us to apply it to our lives today. We ask you to do these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. Thank you for standing. Amen. Thank you, Miss Alexis. Brother Jonathan, Miss Alexis, can be joining the church today. I have forgotten them for the past two weeks. Every service, 
they have wanted to join the church. <laughs> and uh, they found out, they moved all the way from, uh, from Washington to help the church and found out the pastor was an old drug I can't remember nothing. And they're like, do we need to really move or should we go back to Washington? Amen. Good thing the Lord brought them here. Amen. And so I'm thankful for them. Thank you to Miss Alexis and playing and singing this morning. Romans chapter number four. I, I kind of want to take you back and look a little bit at Romans chapter number three. Uh, we haven't been in it in a, in a few weeks. Uh, and, and so uh, I want you to look at something uh, with me. And I look at verse number, uh, let's see here. Look at verse number 23. In, in chapter number three, Paul is introducing the Apostle Paul is the one that wrote the book of Romans. He is the human writer of it. God wrote it through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, but he penned it through Paul. Paul is writing this book to the Romans in Rome, the, the Christian Rome, uh, Christians in Rome. Some of them are Jews. There are some of them there that are saying, hey, we don't get saved by just putting your faith in something. You have to work like we did as Jews, like the Jews had to work in the Old Testament. And, and so they are trying to go against what Paul is teaching here. And, and Paul says it in verse 23. He says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Everybody's a sinner. and There's nobody that can get to heaven by themselves. They all fall, fall short. But then it says, being justified freely. Amen. That means it didn't cost nothing. And God justifies them. It's a judicial act of being made free. You're free. Not because you deserve to be free, because the judge says free. Doesn't matter what you've done at the court. If you go to court and the judge says you're free, you're free. And so uh, we see that in here. It says being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Not in what we do, not in what we buy, not in what we say. It's the redemption, the being bought back, being put in a right alignment, right fellowship with God again through the Lord Jesus Christ. And I cannot emphasize the word Lord Jesus Christ enough. And so he's teaching that and telling them that whom God has set forth to be a propitiation. He was the payment uh, through faith in his blood. Amen. And we've learned a lot about the blood. The blood's what cleanses us. The blood's what saves us. Uh, then Jesus' blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins. God forgives us of our sins. And gives us his righteousness that are passed through the forbearance of God. And so he is teaching justification or being saved by faith there. Okay? And then if we keep reading in verses uh, 27 uh, down through it, he'll sit there and t t talk to the critics a little bit. You know, they're saying, well, we're Jews. And uh, we, 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 we're God's people, and, and, and we work. And he'll say, no, no, it ain't about work. It's about faith, and faith only. And they'll say, well, we're Jews, and it was always about work then. And listen, Paul is about to prove to them that it was never about work in the Old Testament. It's always been about faith. He said, it's always been about it. And, and so he, look at verse 30, 30. Seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and the uncircumcision through faith. The circumcision were the people, the God's people, uh, when they were eight days old, God told Abraham to circumcise all the little boys. And that became God's mark upon man. The people that weren't circumcised and their kids were the heathen, the Gentiles. They weren't God's people at that point. And he says, but look, they all get saved the same way. And that is the same today. Now today, if a Jew wants to get saved, they have to go through the blood of Jesus Christ. God wants them to be saved. God loves the Jewish people. They're his people still. Right now, they're in rebellion. But when we get raptured out of here, God's people, get saved people, get pulled up out of here, there'll be a seven-year tribulation to try to get through to the Jews. And they're still God's people. And so, look at verse number one. So, Paul's trying to tell these people, trying to explain to them about, about faith. Is what he does here is very, very strategic. 
he chooses one of the most illustrious patriarchs there is, Father Abraham. Who's Abraham, Brother Burton? Well, in Genesis chapter number 12 and 13, 14, 15, uh, we, and we go up, I think, all the way to 22, we'll see the life of, of Abraham. But God came to a man named Abraham and put his hand on him and made him the first person that he would touch. And Abraham would have Isaac. Isaac would have Jacob. Jacob's name would be turned to Israel by God. Israel, Jacob, would have 12 kids. They would be the patriarchs or the, the ones that the, the, where the tribes of Israel would come from. Uh, Reuben would lose his. And then and, uh, jo Joseph would be split into two. And, 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 and we would see that. And they would, that's who God was going to use. And so all the Jews, if you were talking to a religious crowd in Rome who were trying to make people believe the old way was the best way, he would bring up Abraham. They would all know who Abraham is. Oh, Father Abraham. Yeah, because we know that in the, the, the Gospels, when Jesus was on this earth, they would say stuff to him like, well, we're of Abraham. You're of the devil. And then we're children of Abraham. And they would bring that stuff up. And so Paul says, well, you know what? I'm going to prove to them that it's always been faith through a man named Abraham. He'll also use one of the greatest kings uh, in the first king God would choose, which would be David. We'll see that in the last couple of verses. So he, he takes and he starts reminding them, you want to help somebody, sometimes you got to get familiar with them. you got to use some familiarity with them to help them. If I want to talk to somebody about something and I don't have something in common with them, me and Joe, we work on cars. I know cars real well. I know how to hit the brakes, and when they start going, I say, oh, I need new brakes. Joe, can you fix the brakes? I don't know how to tear them up, but I don't know how to fix them. So I couldn't even have a conversation with it. Well, you know, I know that the lug nuts come off of that tire. And then that's all I know. But Brother Jonathan knows about cars pretty good. So these two can have conversations about it. So if we was going to try to explain something to Joe, I'd have to find some familiar ground. Now, by looking at Joe, I would say we both like food. And so... I would say, man, you know, I know a good place to eat. And he'd say, oh, yeah, I do too. And, and then we'd be able to talk about stuff. So the, the Jews would understand who Abraham was. Joe, I hope that that was okay. All right, so <laughs> Joe just fixed my brakes yesterday. Thank God. They were grinding and making funny noises. And Kara's like, what's that sound? I said, oh, that's nothing. <laughs> that's nothing. We must. Uh, like, <laughs> Burton, I'm scared. I am too, but I don't think it's anything. Hey, he's going to use Abraham. So look at verse number one. What shall we say then? Hey, what, what, are, we, what are we going to think about Abraham, guys? He says, what shall we say then? That Abraham our father, uh, uh, then that Abraham our father as pertaining to flesh had found. Hey, we know that. What, what are we going to say about Abraham, the one that started Israel? that pertaining to the flesh that was the father Abraham, what are we going to say about him? And so now they kind of think, oh, wait a minute. He's going to try to use Abraham? To tell us about faith. And, and so look what it says. For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory. But not before God, for what says scripture. Now that's important that we understand that today. This is a Bible-believing church. That if preacher gets up there and starts saying stuff that doesn't have to do with scripture, and it doesn't back up by scripture, then it's not a Bible-believing church. And so, uh, what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. It literally says that in the Bible in Genesis 15. And so, it, I want to talk to you today about how it's logical, and only logical, to understand that faith is, uh, 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 faith is the only way it is not works. And so, number one, let's look at Abraham's life and see that Abraham wasn't justified by works. Look what it says. For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory. Listen, we get saved, Joe. God saves us for one reason and one reason only. You know what it is? To get glory. To bring him glory. For people to see me and say, that's a child of God. What a God. 
Not because of something I've done, not because of the tie, not because of the shoes, but because of the faith and because of living for the Lord and because of uh, God being on my life. That they'd say, man, that guy right there brings glory to God. And if he did it by works, by something he did, how does that bring glory to God? It does not bring glory to God if a person can work their way to heaven. It does nothing for God if a person can work their way to heaven. The Jews admitted that they loved God. So Paul brings up Abraham to illustrate a purpose to them. If we could work our way to heaven, we wouldn't need God. I often tell religious folks, that a lot of Catholic folks, I'll tell them. They'll say, well, you know, I just believe this. And I say, well... Let's get a Bible and see what the Bible says. And they, they're not much for that. Some of them, some of them are. And, and I can take that Dewey Ramus and show them, show them faith in the Dewey Ramus just as well as I can show them that King James Bible. But, and then I'll say this. I'll just say, now look, all right. If we have to work to get to heaven, then why did Jesus have to die? Because it doesn't make any sense. Logic tells us if we can get there, then he didn't have to die. If I can just do good and go sit in a booth with some man that ain't even doing good all his life and tell him what I've done and go repeat a few prayers and walk around a couple stations and give a little money and buy a little candle and do this kind of stuff, then why did Jesus have to die? He had to die because he was the only way. He had to die. And so works could not get me there. Abraham wasn't justified by works. Look what it says. Or it would have brought glory to man. That's what that verse is in actuality saying. It wouldn't have brought glory to God. But not before God, it says at the end of verse 2. It would have brought glory to man. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Genesis 15, let me read you a couple verses. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, shall not be, uh, uh, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thy bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad, and said, Look now toward heaven, and tell, me the, tell the stars, if, there be able, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto them, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord, and, the, and he counted it to him for righteousness. God comes to Abraham and says, No, no, your seed's going to be, another, he's going to come straight from you and, and Sarah. It's going to be Isaac. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bless you. And I'm going to bless them that bless you. And I'm going to make you the father of many nations. Right in the Bible. That's, that's why it's so hard to believe that anybody could, could believe that, that, that there's another way. Abraham, a long time ago, God said he's going to make him the father of many nations. Not just the Jews. He's going to be the father of everybody. He's going to be the first one. And, and he says, he tells them all this stuff. And the Bible says, and Abraham believed them. He believed him, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. He said, well, all we got to do is believe. Yes, if you're going to do what that word really means, believe. You see, because everybody around here believes Jesus is the Lord. Everybody believes Jesus is, is God. I mean, just about. Are they all going to heaven? No, because they don't really understand what believing in him is. And putting their faith and trust in him. They put their faith and trust towards him in a prayer, but they don't really get in him. They don't really repent and turn to him. And Abraham did, obviously. He said, you know, I, I believe God. I, I want God. I, I believe he's going to do what he said he's going to do. And the Bible says it was counted unto him for righteousness. It was not works. It was his faith. And God took it and used it. It was an act of God. It wasn't an act of, of, of Abraham. It, it, man is saved by faith, not by works. God takes a man's faith and counts that man's faith as righteousness. Hey, hey, hey listen, uh, Lambert, I've got the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ on my life when God looks at me. Because I put my faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, and now I'm counted righteous. 
Not because I've done anything, not because I wear anything or say anything or do anything. Because God just decided to do it. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith in Jesus Christ, even as we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not of works of the law, but by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Galatians 2.16. Nobody can be justified by works. For by grace are you saved through faith and not of works. It is the gift of God. That's what faith is, and being saved by faith, God gives us a gift. See, these Judaizers and these, these uh, the, even the Gentiles who are believing us, saying, man, we've got to, they can't just get it by faith. Or there's no other way to get it. He said, well, let me ask you this, Brother Bert. When a person comes down and puts their faith in Christ and leaves, and their life never changes, they never care about God, how, did, how come they didn't work? Because that wasn't faith. That was not faith. I've never met anybody that has truly put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and them not get changed. Uh, we have a thing in our house right now. We have a little net type deal, a little cage net type deal, and we buy uh, uh, caterpillars. Bought five caterpillars, five or six of them come in a little jar, and they, they're little worms at first, and, and then they, they cocoon up, and my wife takes them out, and we hit, stick them to this little thing, put them in the cage, and eventually, a week or two later, they start opening up. Guess what comes out? A worm. No, a worm doesn't come out of that. Guess what comes out? A butterfly. And what's interesting about that butterfly is it comes out a butterfly. Man, it's not a worm no more. Metamorphosis has happened. Metamorphi, the word in Romans 12, 2, being transformed, the same word, Greek word for metamorphosis has happened. It's not a worm no more. Now it's a butterfly. But this is really good. It's a butterfly all the way. It looks like a butterfly, everything. But it's black and white. But then my wife takes this water and puts some sugar in it and sits it inside there. And the butterfly drinks the sugar water and starts flapping its wings. And color starts shooting through the whole butterfly. I mean, it was still a butterfly, just black and white. Hey, we get saved. We get saved. It's just black and white. But to get some color, you're going to have to get into the word, the water of the word, the sugar from heaven. Amen. That's what we ought to call that. Write that down in your Bible. The sugar from heaven. Pastor Burton Gates, the Bible. Hey, we get into that, man, and then God changes. And it's faith that does that. Faith does it. God does it. Not me, not me transforming. A lot of churches, hey, brother, you need to wear this, you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to do this, and you'll be fine. No, no, that's me changing them. Now, do you tell people what to do, Brother Burton? Not with, uh, all right, let's, let, me, let me straighten this out real quick. If I love you, I am definitely going to tell you what you need to be doing in the Bible when you ain't doing it. Wait, right, let me change that one. If I, if I know you want me to, and I love you, all right, hold on. I'm trying to think, is there anybody here I haven't told? If you're new and I haven't told you, I will soon, okay? <laughs> hey, listen, we ought to keep it right, man. I'm, the Bible says I'm a pastor, which means a shepherd of the sheep, man. A pastor didn't just let them run off and do whatever they want and go, oh, okay, see ya. Have a good life. No, we come and say, hey, man, listen, you, you got some stuff going on. we got to fix that. Right. If you want to serve in our church, yeah, I'll tell you what, we, we, we do require. Uh, McDonald's makes you wear a funky hat. Hey, we just want you to put some clothes on yeah. if you're going to serve in the church. Yeah. And we want you to live for the Lord and, and have a testimony that would, that would lift up God. But that's not what we're talking about in faith. Being justified by faith is like that. But it's by putting your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and what he did. And so we think about that. It's just logical. The Bible says Abraham looked afar off and saw Jesus. I mean, so it's what it was. He, he, he didn't know the whole plan. But we go to Hebrews chapter number 11, man. He, he left by faith and went to a new country and sojourned in a country with his sons. And, 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 and God changed some lives and, and therefore sprang there. Uh, a, a lot of people came out of, his wife, out, of, out of Sarah and Abraham and the whole world was transformed in Christianity because of his faith. 
And so we look at Abraham's life, man, that's logical to understand right there that he had he believed God and it was counted him for righteousness. Counted. Number two, we see the logic of, 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 of what a worker gets and a laborer gets. Look at verse 4. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace but of debt. What does that mean, Brother Bert? Well, if you work, we pay you. Very simple. The Bible says a workman is worthy of his hire. So if it was work, then we would, do, we would be able to glory in our because we can do it and God says no no it's not works that does it it's faith that does it the worker gets paid grace is getting something you don't deserve that's what that says there now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace it's not grace if you're working for it it's not getting something for free for grace is free he gives it to you freely gives it to you Verse 24, chapter 3, being justified freely by his grace. And it says, it's not of grace, it's debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. You see, man works and someone owes him something. If a man could work for righteousness and, and work hard and God would owe him, that means that, we, that, we, we, that God would be in debt to us. No way. God owes us nothing. He owns everything. Believing in God means we get righteousness. The word ungodly, think about that. As a matter of fact, look at chapter number 5, verse number 6. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. And that he told, thank God he died for the ungodly. He said, well, what are we? Ungodly. What are we trying to do? Trying to be like God. Trying to get godly, get God on us. Live a godly life. But we're going to keep failing and failing and failing. But it doesn't mean we lose. Listen, if you, get, if you lose your salvation when you sin, then nobody's going to heaven. Maybe there'll be a few there. That did, that did, you know, Lord, I pray that you forgive my sin, and then they have a heart attack and die. But it's probably not going to work like that. You see, God justifies the ungodly. This is because the man who admits that he's ungodly is a man that rejects himself and has put his faith and trust in the Lord. Listen, if you don't think you're ungodly, and you don't think that you deserve hell, and you don't think that, you, that, that it's unbelievable that God wants to save you, then you're probably not going to be able to get saved. Because you're probably not going to have faith to believe that he could do it. If you don't think anything's wrong with you, you ain't going to have faith to believe that he can do anything for you. And so it's about putting our faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Mr. Marlene, raise your hand. Put a faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ Thursday night. How about that? Been coming to church for years. Decided that she wasn't right with the Lord, wanted to be right with him. That's how it works. person that realizes they're ungodly realizes they need help. You can't convince a person they're lost. You're not going to be able to show them how to get saved. No conviction, no conversion. A man that doesn't admit that he's ungodly who won't reject, won't reject himself. Man, I've met a few people. I'm fine. I'm doing pretty good. I, I meet them all the time. I, well, Pastor, I did this, this, and this, and this, and this. I'm doing pretty good. Well, man, and that would be after a real convicting message where everybody's at the altar weeping and crying. And then this person will tell me how great they are. Ah, well, I'm not sure they ever realized they were ungodly. Hey, listen, if you don't think that you need help, you can't get help. And believe me, I imagine there are people in this room like, I don't know, I'm fine, I'm fine. But I hope not. Because if without God, we're nothing. And, and, and so Paul is, is very well illustrating that it ain't works. You get paid for work. It's all grace. And you get God's righteousness. But to him that worketh not. I ain't working. He said, well, it seems like you're working. I mean, KK the other day said, Daddy, how come you don't have a job? <laughs> that was good, I thought. What are you talking about, KK? She goes, well, like all the other men and stuff at the church work, how come you don't have a job where you get paid money? And I said, well, they, the church pays me a little bit, KK. I'm a little fine. I'm, I get paid. I'm, like, I'm the pastor. Don't you know who your dad is? I mean, I've. 
always kind of doing something, right? I mean, I, I was kind of disappointed thinking, she think I don't do anything? Uh, hey, listen, but I'm not, you know, I got the greatest job ever in the world, really. It's, it's, it's almost like what she's saying. I'm not working because I'm trying to please the Lord. I get to work. I get to do something for him. And, and that's not just being a, being, being a pastor now. That's called being a Christian. Man, we get to do stuff for God. If a person doesn't have any inkling inside, anything inside of them that wants to do anything for God, personally, I cannot personally understand that because I've never felt like that. I've, I've got saved. And shortly after I got into church, and, and about eight months after God got a hold of me, I've, ever since then, I wanted to do something for him. And I've never been satisfied yet with what I've done for the Lord. I'm satisfied in the Lord, but I've never been satisfied for what I've accomplished for the Lord. I want to do more. And, and so <clears throat> Paul just very distinctly says he justifies the ungodly, and his faith is counted for righteousness. Righteousness, we're, we're perfect in the eyes of the Lord now. And so it's logical to, to understand that. We're pronounced justified. I mean, it's, it's an unbelievable, we're declared to be righteous. Not because we do righteous things, we're just declared it. You're perfect. You're, you're my son, you're perfect. That's what God does to us. Literally. And then look at the rest of it here in uh, uh, verse number 6. Even as David also described the blessedness of man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works. Think about the blessed man. The man that, now this word blessed means it's only a blessing the person that's saved can have. It isn't, woo! It means happy, but it means happy in the state where the Lord has changed your life and you're a child of God. Only people that are saved can have that blessedness. Blessed is the man who is counted righteous without works. Uh, uh, the word, uh, look what it says in verse 6. That describe the blessed man unto whom God imputeth righteousness. The word imputeth means this, to reckon or to count or to put on one's account, or to credit, or to deposit it. We, we, she's not righteous, I'm God, guess what? I'm just going to deposit my righteousness right on in. I'm just going to count her righteous, boom, I'm God, I make all the decisions, boom, you're righteous. Because of your faith, now you're righteous. It's been deposited, it's been counted, it's been imputed upon her, because that's what the blessed man gets. That's what God does when, he does when he saves us. And it's through faith. That's all we're talking about now, salvation through faith. And, and it, it just, pure logic tells us it's not a works. It's because we believe in God. Nothing that we have done. I can't do anything to, to get God to impute anything on me. If God credits a man's account uh, righteous without works, uh, and then we, uh, we understand that it can't be man that does it. You understand that? wasn't what we've done. The blessed man is the man whose sins are forgiven and covered. Look at verse 7, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven, whose sins are covered. David said this in Psalm 32. We've looked at that a lot lately here in the church. Blessed are the man. The, the, uh, blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Well, I thought iniquities and sins were the same thing. They're not the same thing. Iniquity has to do with the heart and what we think about uh, things about sin and the heart attitude towards stuff. Sin is the occurrences. And, and listen, they're covered. When, when we got saved, I got covered. I, I drove away a few times to church when I first got saved going, I don't know, man. It's just kind of hard to believe. I don't have to. I, don't, I mean, all the stuff I've done. I don't even want, uh, you know, I didn't even want to tell nobody that stuff. I mean, if I, I don't want to tell nobody what I've done. But according to the word of God, I've been forgiven. It's been covered. It, it's been uh, changed. I'm, God has done it for me. Logic tells us that God loves us that much. Hey, look at what it says in verse 8. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. 
That's really good. I mean, it looks like a repeat of a bunch of stuff, but it's not. She's blessed because God's not even going to let sin be on her account. He won't even put it on her. He won't credit any sin there. He won't count her as a sinner. He won't do anything. You girls, look at me. He won't do anything. He won't do anything. He credits our accounts with, for, with it. You can give me those dirty looks if you want. Pay attention. He, he, he puts it on our account. That's the way God does it. God does that. He wants to do that. And, and, and listen, for us to think we got to work our way to heaven, no. We don't have to work. God saves us. God does it because we believe by faith that he does it. We don't have to work. We don't have to do anything. But a lot of Baptists think, well, I just ain't going to do nothing. Well, if you got that attitude, I'm not sure you had the faith to get saved. Now, I know that we go through slumps. I know people get slumped and you know, fall back. Say, man, you know, I'm just not. You know, that does happen. But I promise you, I believe this 100%. I believe I'm backing up by Scripture. If a person falls out and never comes back to God and never does nothing for God and quits on God, then I don't believe they ever had God. They never had him. They never really put their faith in them. They came down, well, I'm sorry my wife left me. And I mean, we've talked to people, brother, what you come for? Well, my wife left me. I said, well, okay. I mean, I can marriage counseling, I guess. I mean, I don't, I mean, are you coming for salvation? Or are you coming because your wife left you? If you've got no brokenness and no faith to put into Christ, you can't be saved. But if you'll decide, oh, no, I want God. I'm going to put my faith and trust in him. I'm going to, I'm going to live for him. I'm, I'm going to, hey, listen, that is a faith move there. I'm putting my faith in it. ain't, you know, well, I prayed that prayer. Well, what happened? Nothing. Then you didn't have faith in that prayer. Now, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not into this, you know, if, if, if the person didn't get healed because they didn't have any faith. I'm not into that faith healing stuff. God can heal anybody he wants to, but I can't heal nobody. Uh. But I am into believing my faith that Jesus and you want him, putting your trust in him, because something will happen. A light bulb turned on November 16, 17, 2002 for me. Now, the light bulb got brighter as we gone on. It was, it was just a light. Thank God. But, but, it, but it did get brighter. And we grow in faith. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But listen to me, people that think we got to work our way to heaven, that's wrong. It's not, it's not what it is. Abraham was trying to help them guys. Well, we do work. We do this. We're Jews. Abraham says, look, man, it's faith. Well, let me show you. It's faith because Abraham said it. It's faith because King David said it. Blessed man whose transgressions are forgiven, whose iniquities and sins are forgiven. I mean, think about that. And, and so today... You know, we, we got this thing all wrong thinking, well, I prayed a prayer. But did you have faith in that prayer? Did you look to God, realizing you needed him, and really wanting him, and ask God to become your savior? Or did you just, you know, say it because the preacher told you to say it? Now, how do you feel inside with your Christian life? Do you want to serve the Lord? Do, do you think about the Lord? I mean, that, that tell you if you got any faith in there. Now, I believe you get backslid, but man, you got to come out of that eventually. Can't be hard-hearted all the time. Listen, some of us may need to think about that. Am I saved? Do I really know the Lord? Do your, does your fruit reveal the Lord? The Bible says you'll know them by your fruit. I know plenty of people say they're saved. I don't see no fruit. And if I had to make a life, death, situ, life or death answer, I'd say, no. They got no fruit. There's no way. I have to believe the fruit before I, to see the fruit before I can believe that person has God inside of them. Now, the message is just about faith and, and being saved. That's what, that's, what, that's what he's trying to help them. Uh, the next in chapter 6, we're going to get into some really good stuff about living for the Lord. And chapter 7 about failing the Lord. And chapter 8 about letting the Lord live through us. And, man, it gets gooder and gooder every time we go through it. But today... Maybe you just never put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Heads bowed and eyes closed. Don't be looking around for just a second. If you're in here today, do you know the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you saved today? Have you ever put your faith and trust in him? 
Have you ever, have you ever really said, God, I want you not to escape, not to, not because you was in trouble, not because you are having a rough, I mean, I was having a rough life, but you know what I did that day? I said, Lord, I really want you. And I'm putting my faith and trust. I'm making a decision for you today, Lord. My life didn't change overnight. I was still messed up in many ways, but, but I had no idea. And God began to work on me. And I began to get a hunger and a desire for the Lord more and more as days went on. Hey, is you, are you stalled out in your faith? Listen, if God's not interesting to you anymore and you're saved, man, why don't you ask God to help you with that? Why don't you say, sorry, sorry Lord, I need you. If you've never put your faith over, heads by and eyes closed, if you've never gotten saved, if you've never asked.